Okay. Um, yeah, so this was one of the problems in last week lab, lab assignment. So given a string, we need to count the number of times each character appeared and print its frequency, right? So problem statement is clear. First of all, if problem statement is clear, your uh, logic will be easy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you need to write a C program to read a string and display the frequency of letters in the string using functions. Input string only in lowercase, output the frequency of letters in alphabetical order. So whatever, like if this input string is there, how many times A appeared, how many times B appeared, how many times C appeared, and so on. Each character, how many times it appeared, that is the frequency of the character. So you need to print each character with its frequency. All right. So any, any method? In which we can solve this? Any ideas? Run a loop from A to Z and count how many times each character appears and while counting itself, print it. Okay, that is one method, right? So we know number of characters in English alphabet and it is also clearly mentioned only lowercase characters. So you need not worry about uppercase characters. So basically, all you need to do is you run a loop from A to Z. And for A, you go through the entire string. How many times A appeared? Increment the count by one every time A appears. Once you are done reading the string, print that number and A. Now you move to B, count how many times B appears in the string. Increment the count every time a B appears. Uh, if the final count is non-zero, print that count and B. And so on for each character. If the final count is zero, ignore it. Move on to the next character. Right? So let's write the code for that. So how, so how do I write the loop? Okay, first, uh, the function is void frequency. Its input is, uh, so what is a string? It's a character array, right? This is the input. And why this uh, array size is not given as an argument. Sorry. Variable. What do you mean variable? Then I should give this, no? If I don't give this, how do I iterate over the string? Where to stop? Right. Why do you need to give this size? It is to decide where to stop while iterating over an array, right? In all arrays, you need to give this size. But in character array, you don't need to give this size separately because you know where the string ends because every string ends with a null character. So you are given the information about the terminating point of the string in the string itself. You don't need to give it as a separate number. But in all the other arrays, which are not strings, it can be in, float, double, whatever they are, their terminating information is not available in the array itself. There is no special number which tells you, okay, now the array has ended. No. So that information needs to be given separately. Okay, this is the size of the array. So iterate over so many elements. Okay, so string is special because that terminating information is stored with the string itself as a null character, as a special character. So you don't need to give size as a second argument if your input is a string. Okay. If your input is not a string, then you need to give size as a second argument. All right. <clears throat> so now what we want to do, we want to sort of uh, say, suppose I say cat ch, some character. Um, initially, I initiate it to A. All right. So from A to Z, I will check for each character how many times it appeared in the string. So what should I write here? The loop, how do I start? What is the loop condition? For I, I equal to? Okay, 
int i equal to zero. All right. I less than. Yeah. Since they're all the lowercase characters, they have a determined ASCII value. So can you say from this ASCII value to this ASCII value? Anything is fine. ASCII value you can use or you can use this character directly. I yeah. Can you add addition? That will come later, but this is the outer for loop. First, you need to fix a character. And once you fix the character, now within that, you go through the array. So there is an outer loop to go over the characters, 26 characters. And then there is an inner loop to go over the array. Right? So outer loop condition, what should I write? Should I use for or while? For loop. Okay. What should I write in the for loop? I goes from. Uh, this is pseudo code. So I goes from zero to see, you're all so confused. Now, this confusion can be overcome only if you are clear with the concept. So, what are the different concepts here? Concept of an iterator, concept of ASCII value, concept of character. Some of you are treating I as an ASCII value. Some of you are treating I as an iterator. That is where the confusion is coming. <clears throat> what should we treat I as? Should we treat it as an iterator or as an, or as an ASCII value? Iterator. iterator. So if it is iterator, ASCII value doesn't matter. I need not map to the ASCII value. Okay, so iterator means what? How many times it enters the loop, right? So in this case, how many times should the loop run? 26 times, which means I should go from 0 to 25. It has nothing to do with ASCII values, right? Now what should I write inside the loop? Sorry. Lovely. All right. OK, so <clears throat> so let's use another variable for J. Um, so here um, so here I need to write properly because uh, I can't. It's difficult to express it in pseudocode for in J equal to zero. And what is the terminating condition? J not equal to null. Anyone else? I need to check. I need to go until I find a null character. How do I express that here? Array name is S. S of J. Not equal to null. Yeah. So increment J <coughs> until S of J not equal to null character. J plus plus. Okay. So here the condition always need not be purely in terms of J alone. J can be involved of a larger expression. All right. Yeah. So until the until I encounter a null character, keep incrementing J and execute the steps in the loop. All right. Fine. Now what to do? Yeah, S of I or S of J. S of I. If it is S of I, I can go up to 25, but string may not have 25 characters. Yeah. What? S of J. Okay, what? S of J. Hmm, equal to sorry 
CH plus I. Did you people solve this lab problem? You didn't submit? Hmm? How many of you submitted? None of you else submitted? All of you got zero for this? Yeah? Should I check? It was given in the lab. All of you did. But none of you understood. Now you tell me what to do. <laughs> Is it that complicated? Huh? Algorithm is simple, right? You understood the algorithm? For each character in English alphabet, go over the entire array. All right. I mean, if you sort of have to uh, say, suppose if I take the second string here, say programming, let's take this as example. So this is my array. So initially I say CH is A and then I go through this entire array to find A. All right. Suppose I say count is zero. I start with zero. All right. And uh, uh, I goes from uh, zero to array size, whatever that size is. I mean, until I find the null character, whatever that is. So if S of I, equal to ch what do i do count plus plus or count plus equal to one all right now this is in which loop for yes that will work so so let me do this let me move this. So initially I initialize CH to A single quotes, count is zero, and for I zero to uh, array size, uh, if S of I equal to CH, count plus plus. Okay. So at some point you will come out of this for loop. All right, and then what do you do? No, but before that you need to print. You need to print the output, right? That particular character, if it is not, if the count, if its count is not zero, which means it came at least once. If it came at least once, print its frequency and the character. That is the format, right? Print number of times the character came and the character. All right. So what should be right here? Yeah. If count not equal to zero. Or you can just leave it as if count. This condition will be true only if count is not zero. Okay. What do we do? Yeah, in this case, we'll write the full thing because it's a character and uh, something else. What should we write? Percentage D, percentage C, count and that's it. This is for one character. All right. Now, same thing should work for the next character. What should we do now? Yeah. CH, CH plus I. Why CH plus I? But we need to go one character at a time, right? Why will I be zero?
no by the time it comes out of this for loop i will be n array size where do you want me to write ch plus i after this statement right huh? after the inner loop hmm? but if you write ch plus plus in the inner loop it will be plus plus so many times after the inner loop that is this right if count after this statement also i can write it doesn't make a difference even before this statement i can write it doesn't make a difference you are saying ch equal to ch plus i no he is saying ch plus i i am asking about that it is not ch plus i ch is a it should move to b just increment it by 1 just say ch plus plus that's all but this thing this entire thing should be put inside a loop right so initially ch will be a all right what we will do we can use a while loop what do we write inside while uh while ch not equal to what Is not than value. You can directly use characters also. That's it. While ch less than or equal to z, run this entire thing. Initialized ch to a. Now run the loop, and in the loop at the end. Increment it by one. Now CH will become B. Now run the entire thing. Then again increment it by one. CH will become C. Test for C. That's all. Clear or any doubts? Any doubts? Raise your hand. No problem. I'll repeat. Everyone understood. How many of you understood? How many of you didn't understand? What about the rest? Okay. Um, so let me give you a small anecdote, small story. Usually, I, uh, I I tell stories in many classes, but during this course, there is not much time, so I never told any story. i'll tell you a small story or an anecdote so that i i drive home the point you see there used to be a greek philosopher called socrates i don't know how many of you heard his name and um, he was in athens and in athens there was um, an oracle i hope you know who oracle is oracle is like a messenger between god and us so if you want to speak to god you ask oracle oracle will speak to god and tell you the answer So someone went to the oracle and asked, um, "Who is the most wisest man in Athens?" Oracle said Socrates. But according to Socrates, he is not a wise man. He is a dumb. Uh, he is he thinks very low of himself in every sense. He is dumb, uh, uh, dull. He is not uh, handsome. Nothing. He is short, plumpy. Everything. He thinks everything negative of himself. But Oracle can't lie. so he wanted to know why oracle said that he was the wisest man so what he did he started going to uh, different people who claimed to be the master of a particular subject like someone said uh, he is knowledgeable in arts like he is master of what uh, he understands what art is he is a very wise person someone said he is master of mathematics someone said he is um, master of um, science whatever it is so he went to these wise people to sort of um, understand why they are wise all right so he would start with a question if someone says he is knowledgeable in arts or he is master of arts socrates would start by asking okay define art that person would give a definition socrates will uh, find a small you know some mistake in that that person will initially try to defend saying that no no you didn't understand properly it's not like this it's like that something like that but socrates keeps on going and he and he convinces that person that it is a wrong definition so that person says okay uh, okay that's a wrong definition i am revising it this is a new definition again socrates finds a fault there 
again that person revises again somebody finds a fault again that person revises the definition so this process goes back and forth until a point where socrates proves that that person who claimed to be the master of that subject doesn't know even abc of that subject and this happens with every person he meets whoever claims to be a wise person or a knowledgeable person of any particular subject socrates sort of shows that they are not wise at all they don't even know the subject then at the end socrates sort of finally realizes that okay now i understood why oracle said that i am a wise man it is because it's not because i know the subjects it's not because i know everything it is because i at least know what i know and what i don't know they don't even know what they know and what they don't know they think they know but they don't know i at least know what i know and what i don't know so those who raised hands they are all wise people they at least knew they knew or those who didn't know they raised they also knew they didn't know all others they are somewhere in between you at least take a step right if you know well and good if you don't know at least be clear about that so that you will do something about that if you don't even know whether you know or not know you will not do anything right it is like a you know there is a paradox um there was a donkey it is a very logical donkey right it is so logical that it does not take even a step forward without having a reason now it so happens that that don donkey was very hungry and there were two haystacks uh, beside that at equal distance identical haystacks on left side and right side now which haystack should the donkey go for nearest no same distance identical everything is same in two different directions it's a very logical donkey it doesn't do anything without a reason yeah always choose right why it needs a reason why to go right instead of left or why to go left instead of right why path it's just beside them it's like suppose i am sitting like this it's in my right side it's in my left side exactly donkey dies of hunger it's such a logical donkey that it is ready to even give up its life rather than to give up logic because there is no reason for it to choose one haystack over the other that's it there is no reason so it cannot take a step it cannot act right so there are very so many logical donkeys in this class they don't know whether they know or they don't know they don't know whether they should ask or they should not ask nothing they will remain like that and fail they will give the highest importance to silence than knowledge okay there are many things i mean there are many interesting these are all paradoxical situations like this seems very paradoxical right i mean why should it forego its life it's starving of hunger it's about to die but still it is not giving up this is a paradox it's kind of a you know you can't help it um i don't know how many of you know of any paradoxes simple paradox which you might have heard of is lyers paradox um suppose if i say what i'm saying is a lie or equivalent one is suppose i say this statement is false now if you look at this statement as a whole when we say this statement is false is false means this statement is true which means this statement is false is true which means this statement is false which means the statement is both true and false at the same time how is it possible right so there are many such paradoxes there is no there is no way out of it paradox means there is no solution there is no way out of it it is a paradox this statement is false when i give you this statement as an example this statement is actually both true and false that's it there is no other way out similarly when i say what i'm saying is a lie if you take this statement what i'm saying is a lie is a lie which means the fact that i'm lying itself is lying which means i'm saying the truth which means the fact that i'm lying is a truth which means i'm actually lying right 
So that's the lies paradox. Am I lying or am I speaking the truth? I am both lying as well as speaking the truth. Right? So there are many such paradoxes. There is Achilles paradox. Hare and tortoise story, you know. Right? That is a paradox. That's actually Achilles paradox. Uh, many things are there. Um, Aristotle's uh, Zeno's paradoxes. There are uh, Zeno's paradoxes. That is one example of Zeno's paradox. Many such paradoxes are there. Motion is impossible or um, <coughs> change is impossible. Many things are there. So these are deep philosophical things uh, which you never uh, care to know about anyway. Forget about philosophical things. You are even not uh, caring about uh, your subject where you need to suppose get, to get a grade. Where philosophical things. Anyway, but you make a teacher philosopher. You force a teacher to become philosopher. It's like teacher will get all kinds of doubts. Okay, what is my life? Why am I living? Why am I teaching? What am I gaining out of it? Right? So, you know, that those kind of... Uh, so, whether you become philosopher or not, you will make a teacher philosopher. Good. There is a statement, again, given by Socrates. He said, uh, I don't know, uh, please don't call me... Um, what do we say? Uh, uh, feminists may get angry with me. Um, gender ideologists may fight with me. This is Socrates statement. This is not my statement. He said, by all means marry. If you get a good wife, you will be happy. If you don't get a good wife, you will become a philosopher. So, same thing. I mean, uh, I find something like this. By all means teach. If you get good students, you will be happy. If you don't get good students, you will become a philosopher. Okay? Anyway, I need to take positive from whatever happens. Right? Yeah. Th that was not my statement. Okay? So, please don't hold me accountable for that. All right. So, yeah, so it's such a simple problem. Take each character and then for each character, test the entire array, go through the entire array. If you find that character in the array, increment the count by one. At the end of the array, print the count and the character. Do this for each character in English alphabet. All right. Now, there is one issue with this issue in the sense, um, it's okay. Um, it is a non-optimal way of doing it. It's like for every character, you need to go through the entire array. So for 26 characters, you need to go through the entire array 26 times. Right? Suppose if the array has 1 million characters, then the complexity of your program will become 26 million. Right? But suppose, so, so okay, let me ask you how to optimize this. Yeah. Okay. See, simple thing. Right now, you are not storing the count of any character. As and when you are getting the count, you are printing it and then moving on to the next character. Again, resetting count to zero, again counting and then printing and so on. All right. So here, you are not using any additional space per se, except a variable. All right. But because you are not using any additional space, you need to sort of using additional time. Space complexity is less, but time complexity is more. If you want to reduce the time complexity, you need to increase the space complexity a bit. How? You store the frequency of each character. All right. So instead of going, so it's like, um, you see, in, in the first method, we anchored our code over a character. And then we went through the array. In the second method, we anchor our code over the array. And then while going through the array, we look for the characters. Whichever character we get, we increase its count. But then I'll get different characters, which means I should 
store their count separately and i should increment different count based on different characters right which means what do i need i need a new array okay in this case in the first method we just needed a new variable count nothing more but in the second method we have multiple counts separate counts like count a count b count c i have different counts if i encounter a i will increment count a if i encounter b i will increment count b if i encounter z i will increment count z so i need different counts all right so these different counts either i can use 26 different count variables or i can just use an array of size 26 and store these counts in this array that is called the frequency array usually frequency problems whenever you deal with frequency problems most of the times you create a frequency array you deal with a frequency array all right so simple method let's take this example um so suppose this is my array what am i doing so i am going through this array every time i get a character i increment its count so suppose i say count p plus plus i am getting an r then i say count r plus plus and i am getting a no count o plus plus i am getting an r again again i say count r plus plus so what will happen initially say each of them are initialized to zeros right every time you get a character you increment that particular character's count so rather than using so many variables what we will do we will create an array like 26 For 26 characters, all right. Like this stores number of the count of A's. This stores the count of B's. This stores the count of C's. This stores the count of D's, and so on. This stores the count of Z's. Okay. Say here I am uh, somewhere. P Q R will be there, or O P Q R will be there. Okay. So I see a P. Uh, and initially all these are initialized to zeros right i see a p i come here and i increment this to 1 i see an r and i come here i increment this to 1 i see a no and i come here i increment this to 1 i see a g somewhere g will be there i increment that to 1 i see an r again i come here and i increment this by 1 again this becomes 2 and so on so i am going through the string only once whichever character i am getting i am going to its corresponding cell in the frequency array and incrementing its frequency all right by the time i finish reading the original string the frequencies are stored in the frequency array okay now the only question is these are characters i can't index an element in an array by character these are indexed by numbers only this is index 0 1 2 3 and so on this will be index 25 all right now i somehow know index 0 maps to a index 1 maps to b index 25 maps to z like that all right but computer should know how do we map character to index or index to character here ascii values will come this is small letter so its ascii value 97 a small a ascii value is 97 okay so if a ascii value is 97 how do i map it to zero minus 97 that's it right so a minus 97 will give me zero and b is indexed to 1 right b ascii value is 98 so how do i map b to 1 minus 
so b minus 97 will give me 1 similarly c minus 97 will give me 2 all right and z minus 97 will give me 25 so you take a character subtract 97 from it you will get the index okay that's it now it is simple now what do we do how do i sort of sorry Uh, yeah so now what is the outer loop you should go through the array right okay before the outer loop first we need to create a frequency array what what is the data type of frequency array int frequency array means you are storing frequencies counts ints it is not a character array okay so let's say int frequency array what what is its size 26 26 characters you are storing you initialize all to zeros all right now for i now you are iterating over the which array first original array character array or the string uh, again that same um, uh, for loop for int i equal to 0 s of i not equal to null i plus plus what do we do say we are at the first character what do we do all right yeah so let me break it down into steps for you whatever is this character s of i say it is p right so this p is corresponding to some index in the frequency array so its index is uh, p is what uh, character number 16 so its index will be 15 so index 15 in frequency array gives the count of number of p's all right so in frequency array whatever is the index of p frequency of that index is the count of that character i need to increment it by 1 but how do i get this index of that particular character that character's ascii value minus 97 right but do i need to do anything to convert a character to its ascii value no character is fundamentally what character is fundamentally an integer it is fundamentally an integer data type it is a number it is like smaller than short int its name is character but it is still a number only you can think of it as short short int that's all so since it is already a number i need not use a type conversion or type converter to convert a character to number i can directly use it in any numerical expression all right so here so what are these this is the index right so if you look at the formula what we can write is index equal to character minus 97 all right so character we are getting from the array s so instead of character we write s of i if you are in first character it is s of 0 if you are in second character it is s of 1 and so on so for each character from the original array you subtract 97 from it you will get its corresponding index in the frequency array all right so this index i need to replace with s of i minus 97 let me write it neatly s of i minus 97 this is the index of this character say p p uh, p ascii value minus 97 will give me the index that is 15 so in index 15 of frequency array there is count of p i need to increment it by 1 whenever i see a p that's all done now by the time this loop is done 
the frequency array will be updated with the counts of all the characters present in the original string that's it so now you have the counts you just need to print them so what do we do to print loop through the frequency array so let's say for i going from 0 to 25 frequency array index is 0 to 25 all right what do we do uh if frequency of i not equal to 0 or you can just keep it like this it means it is not equal to 0 only then this will enter all right then what do we do print f percentage d percentage c yeah frequency of i yeah i plus 97 how many of you understood this part how many of you didn't understand again there are so many in between this you will understand if you understood the concept of a cat data type and the concept of ascii value you see that is why i discussed i spent so much time on numerical representation binary representation different data types all those things ascii values and all those things if you understood those concepts you will at least understand this code forget about writing this code you will at least understand what is happening right a character is percentage c percentage d what are they they are format specifiers but what are they they just tell you how to represent a data they will not modify the original data data is same you can represent the same data in different formats it's similar to number system same number you will represent it in one way in decimal number system in another way in binary number system in another way in octal number system and so on similarly same number can be represented same data or same number can be represented either as a decimal number or as a character so that number if you want to print it as a number use percentage d if you want to print it as a character use percentage c right but number is what corresponding to the character it is ascii value right so how do i get back the character from the index ascii value of a character from the index just reverse this formula if index is s of i minus 97 what is s of i index plus 97 that's what we did i plus 97 will give me s of will give me the character right in this case i should not write s of i because that i is index of the original array string but this i is index of the frequency array so there is no relation between this i and that i i basically need the character i have the ascii values that's it i have the index i can get the ascii value of this character from this index that's it okay so this is the code you just create okay by the way this is a void function so this function will not return anything whatever you want to do you have to do inside this function most probably you need to print something all right and this function can be understood independently of the main function right now we didn't touch main at all we just focused on the function because this function does an independent job it's a modular function it's a task which stands independent on its own all right so we created a frequency array and uh, first we went through the original array until you encounter a null character while you are going through the original array every time you encounter a character find its index in the frequency array increment its value by 1 actually you can break it down into further steps you can say you can create a new variable index equal to s of i minus 97 and then right next line frequency fr of index plus plus i just combined them that's all and okay done frequency array is updated with the frequencies and now go through the frequency array 0 to 25 i goes from 0 to 25 if frequency of i it means if frequency of i is not zero then print percentage d percentage c frequency of i and i plus 97 that's it you can check it all cases are satisfied all right this is a very very small code actually i just wrote it in four lines but it is hardly a two line code 
new line is also not necessary that's it this is the code so you see if your logic is clear converting it to code is not that difficult but for your logic to be clear all you need to do is first try to think as a human how will you solve it all right and uh, try to translate first try to write down those steps as pseudo code and then translating that to code is easy all right very similar problem next problem is very similar you got a set of you got an array of numbers you uh, have a frequency for each number almost all the numbers have same frequency except one number there is only one number with different frequency that is the culprit you need to find that number with different frequency and print it this is very similar to the previous problem in the previous case we are just finding the frequencies and printing them in this case there is one more step we are finding the frequencies and then printing only that number's frequency which never matches to any other frequencies okay which is the odd man out in this case 8 and 7 are repeating three times 5 is coming only one time so 5 is the odd man out in this case all the numbers are repeating three times but only 89 is coming twice so 89 is the odd man out and so on all right so this is very similar to the previous one but um in this case there are two methods <coughs> suppose if you want to solve it similar to the previous method what will you do what should be the size of the frequency array the first method is extremely difficult because there is no limit on the characters which character i mean uh, we will come to that in this case what should be the size of the frequency array no it's not 9 but how do you find number of unique numbers you need to find the frequency and there is nothing like number of unique numbers it can come two times three times 10 times the only thing is its frequency should be different from other frequencies so frequency array what should be the size check which is the latest number greatest number okay all right yes that is half the answer you find the greatest number in the array similarly you can find the smallest number in the array so all the numbers will be between these two numbers so create a frequency array of this size max minus min plus 1 all right there will be lot of zeros in between but this is one method how do you find min or max in an array yeah simple say suppose i want to find minimum element in an array initialize min to be the first element of the array and then for the rest of the elements if a of i is less than min then update min with a of i right by the time you are done traversing the array you will get the minimum element in the array and so on so you get minimum you get maximum you create a frequency array of size max minus min plus 1 now you go through each element how do you get its index in the frequency array suppose if my smallest number is 52 in the array and uh, say largest number is 100 whatever it is i plus 52 how do i get yeah how do i get the index of any number a of i minus minimum right so index in the frequency array is a of i minus minimum number that will give you the index corresponding index in the frequency array that's it update that number you will get the frequency array with frequencies that's it now all you need to do is you your frequencies are stored you just check for each number in the frequency array if it is equal to at least one other number break if it is not equal to any number in the frequency array that is the unique frequency print that and the corresponding number in the original array right there is only one odd man out with a different frequency than all others all others will have at least one other frequency which is same as them right only one element will have no matching frequency with others 
that's it so the code is here uh, i mean there are two ways of finding min and max one is you initiate min and max to the first element of the array otherwise another method is you make min a very large number and then compare it with the elements of the array similarly you make max a very small number and then compare it with the elements of the array both methods are fine uh, so you create uh, the size of the frequency array is max minus min plus 1 and then uh, you create a frequency array of that size and then uh, initiate initialize all of them to zeros and then go through the original array and increment the index uh, the index of the element in the original array in frequency array is a of i minus min increment that value by 1 all right you your frequency array is filled finally now you go through the frequency array for each element if there is at least one other equal element then break this is not the element you need if you go through the entire array and you finish going through the entire array which means you didn't find the equal element which means that is the i you need all right so the corresponding value and its frequency this is one method but in this method what is the disadvantage lot of space is being wasted suppose if there are only five numbers but the range is very large say 1 to 1 billion i am creating a frequency array of size 1 billion just for five numbers lot of zeros are there space is being wasted another method is i create a frequency array of size 5 only all right and i sort of ensure that um, there is a corresponding obviously now the index of each element will be uh, the corresponding index in both the arrays all you need to do is to store the count of the element in the first instances of the element suppose 5 may be coming three times but i will not store 3 in the frequency array in all the indices only in the first instance of 5 i will store 3 in the remaining instances of 5 i will store minus 1 which means i visited them okay so first instance of a number you store the count and then again look at the frequency array find the count and the corresponding index will give you the value of that number and so on so in in the second method space is being saved all right in the first method time is being saved okay so these are different methods um, yeah now these two examples will be useful only for these kind of examples again for diff different examples you need to think of different logic but concepts cut across all examples so focus on concepts and practice practice is the simple solution for all and come to us with doubts that's it it's a very simple algorithm i gave you you just need to follow that you will see how much difference it will make okay yeah so let's stop here